Hello, my soccer universe in Buena Feste. Uh, Merry Christmas. We're gonna look at the performances of a few teams. Uh, of all the teams in Serie A, and I kind of sorted the background there in terms of who has been performing best behind me to worst, and I'm varying. The biggest, at least statistically, the biggest improved team uh, in terms of um, comparing current expected points versus at the beginning of the season that is Fiorentina uh, which I will mention a little bit I will probably run you through uh, my thoughts on the uh, top 7 plus Fiorentina and then at the end I leave you uh, with all the other teams there's plenty of interesting stuff I mean Torino is right behind Inter there's Empoli is the second biggest so the Tuscan teams really really doing well this season as well so there's loads of interesting stuff happening for sure. But I would say in order to explain the performance graphs we have to jump in and we'll start of course with uh, the champions Inter. You see here two graphs. Uh, on the left side we have the expected points, how they develop over the season so far and to the right how the uh, rating uh, it's relative to the rest of the league um, developed. You see a load of white lines. These are all the all the graphs that we have kind of co co combined. And I highlight the one team that we're looking at, which in this case is of course Inter. And you can also see that sometimes there are longer gaps in between uh, those. This is of course the Inter three international breaks where we had you know the preseason is the first one, then uh, two rounds, and then there's the first international break. Then we had uh, five games, another international break, and so on. So you see the rhythm. And what we can see with Inter is basically what we've been feeling uh, in the season that uh, they started out relatively well and then it was kind of a little bit drifting without being really really ter ter terrible at one point they were only third uh, to be expected so they had a, a little blip there after the second international break but from that point on Inter was relentless picking up the pace and you can see how the gap opened up and it opened up big Com uh, it is them doing well combined with both Napoli and Milan then falling away. Uh, it's also a little, bit, a little bit reflected in the ratings, but uh, there was the change was not as big. Uh, I also want to point, point out that we see here a clear top kind of five-ish teams that are always a little bit up to four or five-ish teams that are, are always a bit up there. Uh, then the, I think that the next uh, tier are kind of especially in the, the Roman teams and then uh, more or less the rest of the league with a tight midfield and then a few teams that are breaking away towards the bottom. Now uh, Milan's is almost the opposite of Inter except they were never as highly ra rated. In fact they are uh, consistently on the fifth best team in terms of ratings however they had a pretty good, good performance starting out very very well and then only uh, just before, you know, when the derby, the, the derby came to just before the international break, there's a little uh, drop and then it did not really trans transfer. Before that, Milan was a machine. Then it kind of dropped, at least at the end, a little win up there. And the two wins kind of two or three week, week, week weeks ago also helped a little bit there as well. Uh, a very interesting graph is the one for Atalanta, who after a so-and-so start, you know, kind of a little bit falling down, a little bit dithering, and then suddenly they picked up the pace. But as soon as they were out of the Champions League, and especially in the last two rounds, uh, last uh, two, two rounds, they suddenly all the good work they had is almost undone again and Atalanta suddenly is a, more or less where they started at the beginning of the, of the season. So very, very up and down in that sense. Uh, U.S. graph kind of telling, bad start. Uh, then they're a little bit trying to pick it up and then again, horrible, horrible string of results and since then kind of you know stabilizing things it's an up and down season for for juve but it was very quickly they were actually the preseason favorites and now uh they are losing uh ground rather 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 quickly uh especially the spell around november uh, to be at the end of october beginning of november you see it in in the ratings uh that really really set them then away from inter Napoli very similar to Milan except we don't have the upward at the end because <laughs> they lost uh, against Spezia after winning at Milan so this is kind of the up and down everything good that was uh, done with Milan with the win at Milan is now undone again and you see Napoli was were really really looking good and then the injuries hit with Ozyman and Koulibaly out and suddenly Napoli 
doesn't look all that well anymore. Uh, quickly through the Roma teams, very, very, very similar with Lazio, always a little bit below Roma. Uh, Lazio, yeah, also rather, rather steady. And as I said, Roma, a good start and then actually a little bit falling down, picking up the points at the end. But uh, Roma still very much work in progress. I quickly want to go to the big, biggest winner. I want to point out the curves for Hellas Verona are very interesting as well, but uh, we go to Fiorentina, which you see is a very, very steady rise, especially in December. They were pretty much outstanding. Uh, they had a very good start to the season, then kind of a little little bit drifting, so like, uh, in October, uh, November, but uh, in, in December, they really pick, picked up the points. And you see the special passion ratings, how consistently Fiorentina has been going up, 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 maybe uh, ready to join kind of these top uh, eight teams. They are now right above where we would expect Sassuolo. Uh, of course, the biggest loser are Cagliari and you see the curve here. It has been steadily going down and that's not good uh, if you're a supporter of Cagliari, which I actually know few colleagues there as well. So yeah, these are just a few thoughts. I will leave you uh, with all the other graphs here for your enjoyment. I think it is really in in interesting to see how a season can develop and where we're breaking points and um, where you can see the season really going in one uh, in one's favor or not. So yeah, uh, you get about 10 seconds uh, for every team. If you want to pause it to kind of take, take, take it in a little bit better, it might be also good to... Uh, pull out the schedule to see where things happened or where coaching changes happened on Wikipedia page for instance and yeah I will see you on the other side of that uh, little montage
I really hope you enjoyed it. I had lots of fun doing that. Please drop a line below what you thought uh, about these graphs, if they were informative to you. Uh, give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed this video, subscribe to my channel and see more and I will talk to you soon. Bye! Hey there! I really hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, here are some videos and playlists that you might enjoy too. Also, please consider subscribing to my channel and hitting the little bell so that you get updated whenever something happens in my soccer universe. And with that, have a wonderful day! Bye.